What is the internet angry about today? Comped handguns. Hmm. Hey everybody, I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics, and we're going to talk about compensated handguns. So there's been a recent uh, surge in popularity for compensated handguns for everyday carry, for concealed carry, for duty carry. Uh, the idea of a compensated handgun is not new. Uh, in fact, it came from the competition world. Uh, guys wanted to keep that muzzle flat uh, while running whatever power factor they needed to run. They wanted to be able to control the gun, get that recoil down quick as possible. Because no matter how strong you are, um, and no matter how small of a round you're firing, recoil still occurs because Newton's laws of motion say that like this is going to be a thing. Uh, you can't break the laws of physics, but they can break you. Um, so compensators, well, what do compensators do? Basically what we're talking about is as the bullet leaves the barrel or as the bullet is leaving the barrel. Um, there's a lot of gas, a lot of power coming out right there behind it. As it's coming down the barrel, or I should say going down the barrel, there's an equal and opposite amount of energy going back the other direction, uh, what we know as recoil. The reason the guns recoil up is because recoil is always going to take the path of least resistance. If I've got a really good solid grip here, then the only place for that energy to go is along the top of the gun, which is going to cause the gun to pivot on our uh, grip and cause the muzzle to rise. Um, which is it's just going to be more or less um, a thing across every single firearm that's out there. Uh, I actually had somebody ask me, why do guns recoil up? Well, that's why. A gun isn't going to recoil down because that isn't the path of least resistance for that energy to take. And that's why when we shoot one-handed, the gun tends to recoil up and in because that area of the grip is open. Depending on which hand we're using, it's going to be the same. The energy is going to take the path of least resistance. So the compensator. Compensators are usually made up of expansion chambers, baffle plates. There's a couple different designs out there for handgun centric comps. Uh, this is the Texas Black Rifle Co. Micro Comp. Uh, used it mainly for this video, but you're probably also somewhat familiar with uh, Agency Arms has the knock, which uh, I'll show you a little bit in this video as well. Um, bullet leaves the barrel. All that gas is coming out with it. All Some of that's going to be unburnt powder. Um, it's an explosion of energy. It literally is an explosion. The compensator harnesses some of that energy to keep the muzzle flat by redirecting the gases to help drive the gun down or keep the gun as flat as possible. The more power you necessarily have available to you, the flatter the gun can be kept. But one of the shining things for compensators, especially on compact guns like this Agency Field 19, this is a Glock 19 size gun. In fact, it started its life as a Glock 19. Now it has a compensator added to it, which brings it roughly to the length of a Glock 34. Still very concealable. Um, it allows us to get the same recoil control potentially out of our self-defense rounds as we're normally getting on our range ammo. So when we shoot 9mm, and I mean we as in the community of those of you like myself who shoot 9mm, we usually shoot 115 grain and usually the cheapest ammo we can find to include reloaded ammunition. What ammo are you shooting? Um, it's probably going to be 115, maybe 124. Uh, you're probably going to shoot more target ammo than you do your chosen self-defense rounds. So right now, think to yourself, when's the last time you put down 50 rounds at a time of your self-defense ammunition? Get a little sciency here real quick. Hebian plasticity. Hebian plasticity is the technically correct term for what some people refer to as muscle memory. Our nervous system in basically introduces programming to control certain repetitive motions. That's how we learn how to do things. Hebian plasticity applies to recoil and recoil control. If I spend all my time shooting 115 grain or most of my time shooting 115 grain and then the big moment comes and I unfortunately have to use my firearm in self-defense and I'm shooting 124 plus P plus P plus P plus P plus because that's what the guy said was gonna really do the job or I'm shooting 147 with the same amount of extra pressure my body is not used to, my mind is not used to, I have not programmed myself to manage that, that amount of recoil, that amount of pressure in my shooting cadence. I may not shoot as, as, I may not shoot less accurately, but I'm probably not going to be able to shoot as fast. And of course there is that big risk after that first round that my accuracy is going to go to shit as well. 
Um, physiology is a thing. These psychophysiological aspects that go into how we shoot are something that we have to pay attention to. So anything that we can do to find an advantage, uh, we should definitely at least look into before we get angry about it because it's, or before we yell about it on the internet because it's something that we don't do. For full disclosure, my everyday carry is not a comped handgun. My everyday carry is an agency field 17, no compensator whatsoever. Uh, the reason for that is I can maintain the same cadence and the same accuracy on my self-defense ammunition as I do on my range ammunition because I shoot as much of both as possible. Uh, if your budget doesn't support the expenditure of large amounts of self-defense ammunition because they, the rounds usually are more expensive, uh, then a compensator might be something worth thinking about. What is a compensator going to do for us? If you're shooting 115 grain range ammo through a compensated Glock 19 like this, you're not going to see a big advantage in recoil control. Uh, the round just isn't hot enough, so to speak, to engage the benefact, the beneficial aspects of the compensator, such as that expansion chamber, those baffle plates, that ability to redirect those gases to keep that muzzle flat. Uh, but as I'm showing you right now, starting off with 115 grain, and then I go through uh, three different 124 grain plus P offerings from different ammunition companies. Uh, there's also a 135 grain uh, plus P, uh, I think it's a critical duty right there at the end. So as you can see, the muzzle is maintaining more or less the same recoil trajectory, regardless of the round that's fired. The compensator is adding to the ability to get the gun back on target faster. Now there is shooting for maximum speed and then there's shooting for maximum cadence. Uh, shooting for maximum speed is literally running the gun as fast as I can with very little attention to where those bullets are going. Uh, it's a habit that some people develop when they shoot steel, especially larger size pieces of steel. They just hear rings and they can hear rings really, really fast, so they run the gun. Ding, 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 ding. But they never really, or maybe in that instance, they don't pay attention to, are those bullets like this, or those hits like that, or are they more like this? When you shoot on paper, it keeps you honest. Uh, it forces you to be like, okay, I'm running the gun fast, but I'm actually outrunning my ability to settle my dot or settle my sight picture. So for me, I am a cadent shooter. I shoot as fast as I can settle my dot or I can settle my sight picture, depending on which aiming system I'm using, based on the distance in which I'm shooting and any other potential issues that I have to deal with. The compensator helps me on that, those, those self-defense rounds get that muzzle flatter faster. So if I can run the gun faster, now I have the ability to do so. Of course, with any new, and I'm, I say new in regards to self-defense, with any new technology, there's gonna be um, naysayers and there's gonna be people who drag up old myths. One of the myths I've seen is it's going to ruin your night vision or your ability to shoot at night. And that's absolutely categorically 100% incorrect. Uh, right now, I'm showing you both the Agency Arms Knock, which is an integrally compensated pistol, and this uh, Texas Black Rifle Company Micro Comp on my Agency Field 19, both shooting multiple different types of self-defense ammunition. As you can see, the flash is completely manageable. Now imagine how little a flash I would have to deal with if I was shooting with a weapon light on it like I probably should be. If I'm in an environment where it's dark enough that the muzzle flash could be a potential issue for my vision, I'm probably going to be running a weapon light anyway. And light overcomes the light. Uh, it neutralizes things in the way that our eye doesn't have to deal with flash attenuations and it doesn't have to deal with refocusing of the pupil. So categorically that's not an issue. You would have to run such a hot round to have the muzzle flash be completely ridiculous that you probably it probably wouldn't be a round that you'd put in your gun for self-defense anyway and you'd have to purpose build it to generate that much flash because what is muzzle flash uh it's it's expa explosive expansion of gases and energy and sometimes unburnt powder most of the time it's unburnt powder igniting as it exits the barrel so if you think about a crown barrel on a traditional handgun its muzzle flash is going to be a little bit worse than something that's going to be caught in an expansion chamber and redirected then it just allowed to bloom and go wherever it wanted. Now, ported barrels. Some people confuse compensated guns with ported guns. Ported guns means there's ports along the barrel somewhere or down, like the Glock, there, there were a couple Glock models and there's, there's numerous other handguns and some people have it done aftermarket. Those can potentially uh, cause uh, issues with your vision. One, because the ports are very close to your sight picture and two, the gases coming out of there are more explosive because they're still in the burning charging process of the bullet leaving the barrel. Um, ports also arguably reduce a little bit of your muzzle velocity and so on and so forth, but this video isn't about ports, so I just wanted to bring ports up um, because sometimes people confuse ported guns with compensated guns and they're not the same thing. 
No free lunch. What are some drawbacks to using a compensator on an everyday carry gun? Well, the uh, biggest issue, of course, is going to be the size of the firearm. Um, I've now taken a Glock 19, which is pretty concealable, um, and made it the length, roughly, of a Glock 34. Now me, my frame type, the way I carry guns, even appendix, I can get away with a Glock 34. It's not an issue. And if you're already carrying a full-size weapon light like you should be, uh, if you can, if you can, um, as you see, the, the comp still brings the gun shorter than the light. So if I'm able to conceal the light, especially appendix, I shouldn't have any problem whatsoever adding a compensator. Now. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to comp my my 17 because I might do that and see if I'm able to carry that because let's be honest even though I can control my 17 with self-defense ammunition the comp would definitely make my life a little bit easier uh, because it does add a measurable effect on recoil or I should say my ability the, the, to lessen the muzzle rise uh, of the fired shot. Another potential drawback on using compensators is spring weight in your gun. You usually have to run a lighter spring. Uh, and that could co that could create reliability problems. So just because you saw a cool guy on the internet doing this doesn't mean you should run out, slap a freaking KKM comp barrel on your gun, um, and you know start carrying it without fully vetting it. Anytime you buy something, put a number of rounds through it. And when I say number of rounds, that number should begin with a one and end with three to four zeros. Uh, just to make sure that you're going to trust your life to it and make sure that ammunition is split up between uh, higher weight range ammunition and self-defense loads as well. I know it's going to be a little more expensive, but if you're going to put your life in the hands of a compensated gun, you need to make sure it's going to function correctly and it's going to be reliable. Another potential drawback of compensated guns, if you have to fire one from close retention, you're going to know you did it. It's like getting hit in the face with a bag full of hot sand. It is uncomfortable, however, it is not debilitating and it's not going to kill you. It just doesn't feel very good, which means you probably won't want to do it more than you have to. Of course, the odds of you having to shoot from close retention are somewhat small, but since they still exist and you're probably more likely to have a self-defense shooting close up as you, than you are further away, um, it's definitely something you have to be knowledgeable about and something you should probably have the experience of uh, in a training or a practice setting before you go out in the real world and carry this thing. Now, I'm sure one of the questions I'm going to get is what comp do I recommend? Uh, I recommend the Agency Arms Knock. I plan on releasing a video on that in the future, but that's a pretty high price point, and I'd understand if somebody would balk at how much that gun costs because you are paying for, well, a sight tracking Glock that is integrally compensated. So uh, there's a lot of engineering, a lot of R&D, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into making that gun work. Um, outside of that, there are there aren't as like I said, there aren't as many nine millimeter compensators that are handgun centric on the market as you would think there would be, especially in our industry where we get guys that put out muzzle devices that have fucking Picatinny rail on them, but I can't get more than four or five quality comps. Uh, anyway, uh, so the Texas Black Rifle Company comp, I've been using that for a while. I do like it. Um, one potential downside to it is it, it, it marries itself to the gun and now that's one piece. Um, you can technically take it apart. They don't recommend you do that. So you're going to be cleaning with the snake or, or what have you. Um, and you got to you got to give up the threads on a threaded barrel because you got to you know, screw into it to to time that comp in place. Uh, KKM has always been a, a quality combination of barrel and compensator, so those are out there as well. And I, I think there's a few more coming to market. I, I'm not entirely sure, but I've heard things. So there might be more competition, um, more innovation when it comes to compensators on the market um, very very soon. Um, so if I had to recommend, I would say KKKM, the Texas Black Rifle Company comp, just because I've been using it and I like it a lot. Um, and then of course there's the Agency Arms Knock if you can afford it. Uh, and if you can't afford it, I highly recommend you get one. Um, that does have a break-in period. I'm sure you've seen it on the internet, talk, guys talking about it, um, because the tolerances are engineered to where break-in is just un unfortunately something you have to do. But once it gets broken in, it functions flawlessly. It's a great gun. If you're not a big fan of the, uh, the, um, Timberwolf frame it comes on you can throw it right onto a 19 uh, which is how I generally do it um, so getting back to topic at hand compensated handguns that is kind of my take on it I had a few people ask me about it what do I think about it I think that it's a great idea uh, I think it's probably started off from what I've heard the legend is that especially in regards to the role in special started off as a joke and then somebody was like no wait this really works we should do this let's do this and it allows to take a compact gun and give you a lot more muzzle control of what you'd be used to uh, with a larger f larger frame, or I should say a longer slide handgun, such as a 17 or a 34. Um, the internet, of course, and, and the gun community in general, we, we love to pick on ourselves, uh, sometimes uh, deservedly, uh, and sometimes just because it's something new and we don't like new, so we want to smash it with rocks. So 
my feeling on it is there is a valuable n valuable addition of a compensator to a compact handgun for the purposes of self-defense shooting but it needs to be done knowledgeably and you also have to identify do you actually really need it do you need 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 it and of course that's going to be subjective so if you can already shoot cadence with your self-defense ammo like you can with uh with your carry ammo or your training ammo rather, and you carry a full-size gun, it might not be something that's for you. You should still check it out if, if your budget can allow you to experiment with it. But uh, if, if you're looking for better recoil control and you're looking for an advantage in the recoil control of that higher pressure self-defense ammunition, the compensator is definitely going to give you that. It's not going to make you a better shooter, so don't even think that. But it is going to allow you to control that recoil better and allow you to shoot the same cadence that you're used to shooting with yourself with your I should say with your training ammunition um, that being said fire more self-defense ammunition when you practice as, as much as your uh, your training budget or your practice budget will permit you to I'm Aaron Cowell with Stage Dynamics train accordingly